So a glimpse of some further chaos coming in 2022 today, let's talk about some new leaked rules for the Chaos Demons. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought it would be fun to talk over some new leaked demon rules that have been making their way around the various rumour sites on the internet. Currently Chaos Demons are arguably the single weakest army in Warhammer 40k post the balanced data slates. They haven't really got a fat lot of support throughout the whole of 9th edition to be honest. Started out maybe somewhere in the middle tier, but since then just about every single army has had decent buffs. I think the only reasonable upgrade that they had was really when Bellacor drops, and he's not really enough to carry the faction on his own. In the latest balanced data slates, the other armies that were somewhere on the same sort of ballpark as demons all got powerful buffs. Things like the Guard or Chaos Space Marines getting their new codex. And to be honest, it was really quite conspicuous that Chaos Demons got literally nothing. No points changes within their codex. No special rules or benefits like the Guard getting Hammer of the Emperor or Armor of Contempt. I think the only thing that they did get was their big Forge World Greater Demons getting a minor points reduction. To me, this just implies that Chaos Demons are probably going to be the next codex out after Chaos Space Marines. They're one of the last two that hasn't been updated yet. And for me, the single biggest reason for not giving them any sort of power boost would be that if it was just about to get outdated by the release of their new book. Besides that, they have also revealed their new Demon Prince kit, which I think might well be the model that drops alongside the Codex. In terms of rules, things have mainly been pretty quiet aside from this new leak. A few different sites have reposted this in various different places, but the leak's rules were shared by a new YouTube channel called Wallace who based on the only other video that they've uploaded, I believe is the person behind the Warp Hammer Chaos Tactics page. I have seen a couple of their articles before, well worth checking out if you're a follower of the Dark Gods for some competitive Chaos Tactics. I'll post the link to Wallace's YouTube video down in the description. It's well worth checking it out straight from the direct source. From the context, it sounds like he's been in touch with someone who's got their hands on the Demon's Codex early, maybe one of Games Workshop's playtesters, or someone who was one until recently. In terms of reliability, all this sounds very believable. Obviously from a single source who sounds like they've heard it from someone else, it's not exactly confirmed yet, so as normal with rumours, I would take it with a pinch of salt. Still though, there's some really cool rules changes, and just in general for 9th edition codexes, a new book would almost certainly boost the demons into being a far more viable army. If anyone needs a buff in 40k at the moment, it's them. In any case, let's take a look at these actual rumoured changes then. First up, there's a few core rule changes. Perhaps the most interesting one that the guy mentioned was a demon save. Currently the vast majority of demons are protected by their 5 plus invul saves and not having all that much of an armor save to speak of. Weirdly, if this leak does turn out to be accurate, they're replacing the nice simple invulnerable saves with a special sort of demon save that's basically an armor save that can't be modified by AP. Most of the time that will effectively function as an invul save. The biggest difference would be that you can't just have invul saves just suddenly turned off by one ability or another. Say for example, psychic powers like Null Zone and Death Hex won't suddenly make demon armies just evaporate like they have no saves whatsoever. Technically that would represent a buff, but it's just a little bit disturbing that invul saves are now no longer reliable enough for the army to rely on, because there's a few too many things that happen to ignore them. In any case, it still sounds like it'd be quite similar for demon players though. Most of the time you're going to get this save regardless of opposing abilities. The other interesting thing that they mentioned about them was that they might vary between range and melee. One example that Mr. Wallace gave was that a Lord of Change gets a 3 plus save against ranged attacks and 5 plus in melee. All the saves are at least 5 plus or better, and Corn Ones get a 4 plus against range. Apparently, the type of saves that you get vary from god to god. I might guess that Slanesh might well have a better save against melee than at range, maybe somewhat similar to Drukhari Witches. Overall, though, sounds like fairly good news for the demons. Certainly, if Zenish demons are 3 plus against range across the board, then it could be pretty horrendous trying to deal with an army of effectively 3 plus invul saves, unless you've got an army that deals damage at close. Next up, they made brief mention of a warp storm table, an army wide special rule that's stronger the fewer gods that you have in the force. To me, this sounds like it would be the pure demons army rule, the one that you'd get if, say, you didn't have any chaos marines. There weren't really very many clues to that besides it being a points based system. A new army wide rule would certainly be on the cards, though, for a new demons codex. Every army so far has had a reason to field them pure without any allies. Next up, they mentioned a few changes about greater demons. Only one per detachment is perhaps the biggest news. A bit of a painful about flip for Games Workshop, seeing as the current best demons list is arguably Bellacor plus a bunch of Keepers of Secrets, kind of spamming greater demons to tear chunks out of the enemy. 
I think overall it's probably a good thing that the very best demons list doesn't require you to get lots and lots of greater demon models, which are kind of expensive and you might or might not want to get lots, though just outright banning more than one per detachment I do find to be a bit painful. If any dedicated demon players had got together a few bloodthirsters for example, it's a bit of a shame not to be able to field them all in one army. Otherwise they mention they all have 18 or more wounds, which would mean better defence, but would be bad for obscuring terrain. Hopefully they've made them overall durable enough, so that's not going to be the biggest deal though. Otherwise, apparently most units can deep strike for free now. That would be quite a nice touch, and going back to say 5th edition demons, I remember in that codex they had the fairly intimidating ability to deploy entirely off the table if they wanted to, and all come in via deep strike. Being able to put units in flexible reserve without CP though is really quite a big advantage. Lesser demons are reportedly only going to be in 10 model squads now, though weirdly besides the demonettes. I must admit that does seem like a really peculiar change given what they've been doing throughout 9th edition so far. Several of the more elite infantry units, like the Admeg or the Adeptus Auroritas, managed to get squads built out from 10 to 20, then weirdly demons are apparently having squads taken down from 30 to 10. Apparently they will be getting some decently buffed profiles, but I'm still very surprised indeed that they don't let you build out to 20. I'd say out of all the changes that were mentioned on this list, that one does seem the single weirdest. I can't see that being too popular with people who have hordes and hordes of one type of lesser demon. In 8th edition you had people fielding something like 150 plague bearers in lists. Even getting anywhere near that is unlikely to be very doable now. You probably need to start looking at brigades to even get close. Otherwise, there's a couple of mechanics that apparently are removed. Summoning is gone completely. That one doesn't really surprise me at all. I think it was a nice idea that they had at the start of 8th edition, but in general just tended to be really underutilised by a bunch of players. So a few smart Chaos Tournament players did make it work to good effect. It's kind of a shame seeing as it is quite fluffy to have Chaos Space Marines rustle up units of demons, but the rule did feel like it had been very neglected since it first came out, and had generally just been a bit of a nuisance to Games Workshop, and I'm not too surprised that they got rid of it. As well as that for removed stuff, apparently Chaos Furies are just out of the codex now, I guess you can no longer buy them on Games Workshop's web store. I'm honestly kind of surprised at that change though. I think if they'd wanted to keep them in, they could have just re-released Warcry's Chaotic Beasts with some 40k packaging, and they would have made some pretty excellent Fury models in my opinion. In any case, doesn't seem to be great news for any collectors that had made some of those. I think the old models were kind of ugly, but quite a few people had created their own custom kit bashes. Otherwise, after talking about the core rules, they went through each of the different gods, Apparently horrors aren't going to need to have reinforcement points to use split anymore, they're just going to get it inbuilt into their datasheet completely for free, and going to happen on a 5+, plus, presumably to turn into two different blue horrors. I guess that's really quite a nice fluffy change, though it does mean if you have pink horror squads but you don't have any blue or brimstones, it might be an incentive to pick them up. I guess at least it's a little bit better than 7th edition when they suddenly made it so every single pink horror unit could maximally split into loads and loads of smaller ones. In theory, if you wanted to take maximum advantage of that rule, you'd have to have absolutely tons of blue horrors and brimstone horrors on standby for when your pink horrors died. Otherwise, for Zinch, Infernal Gateway is apparently getting a bit more dangerous. It hits all units within 3 inches of the enemy units, not just the enemy model that you target. A very nice boost for that one. If you had a Lord of Change swooping in to target something at the centre of the opponent's army, that could lead to some very big damage indeed. Kairos Fate Weaver apparently will be getting a bonus to cast on each battle round. You get to add the number of the battle round to the psychic dice, so basically when he's casting on round 5 he's almost guaranteed to cast every single time. It'll make him ridiculously hard to deny as well. And Treason of Zinch, one of the psychic powers, can now turn off auras. That will be replaced in the Control a Character ability. Quite a nice little trick to have in the army there. The Dark Angels version of that from the Interomancy discipline is fairly popular if you get it on an important character. I think Corn Demons are one of the units a lot of people are hoping that they might do up a bit. For really quite a long time, outside of a few deep striking blood letter bombs, they haven't been all that strong on the table. They kind of just need a bit more all round might, it does sound like they're both getting a bit stronger and a bit tougher. According to the leak, the blood letters will be getting strength 5, AP 3 and damage 2, with just 2 attacks base, no need to charge. I did think that 2 damage on their strikes was pretty likely, given the way that a bunch of other similar dangerous power weapons have gone. I can't help but think that that's likely to come with a points increase though. That's a serious amount of killing power, and no doubt you'll be able to put some decent buffs on them. Most corn things are also gaining a pip of toughness and a 4 plus save against shooting as well. Effectively a 4 plus inball save given that they're demons, and I think that's really quite a sensible change. 
I did think it was pretty sad for the blood letters that you couldn't just put them on the table and march up laughing at the enemy firepower, and instead had to use gamey tricks to get them into combat, which didn't really seem very cool. I think it's often been a problem in 40k that even if you hit very hard in melee, if you can't get there then a good melee stat line just isn't really very useful. Toughness 4 and a 4 plus invul against range at least seems like it would go some way to fixing that. The other changes mentioned were that the Blood Throne has been renamed to a Rend Master. They have messed around with the names for those HQs quite a bit now. And apparently the Bloodthirster will finally be getting a melee stat line that's worthy of its name. 8 attacks base, which is very pleasing for Korn. And getting some fairly common sweep or strike rules on at least one of its profiles. Apparently the strike's AP4 and a big damage D3 plus 3. While the sweep mode is double attacks at strength user, AP3 and damage 1. I think adding a sweep mode was a really good idea for the Bloodthirster. It was a bit silly when they could get in combat with a squad of guardsmen and not being able to kill all of them just because their attacks were too few and too high damage. I think it would be pretty fun for Bloodthirsters to be good. They've been lacking behind the other greater demons for quite a long time. I guess if they too are getting plus one toughness, then toughness eight would also help them get there. Otherwise, there were a few more bits for Nurgle and Slanesh. Apparently Nurgle's disgustingly resilient is going to become damage one the same as Death Guard. I did think that that one seemed at least fairly predictable, to be honest. Games Workshop seems to have been avoiding 5 plus feel no pain type saves as an army wide mechanic, and maybe it's not the worst thing in the world to remove another layer of dice rolling. I think some Nurgle Demon players will certainly miss that, as the Death Guard players did when theirs went away. Overall, though, if between their profile changes and minus 1 damage, it means that they're generally all around tougher, I think that would typically please Nurgle more. Talking of which, that change wouldn't really work very well with Plague Bearers if they remained at one wound, so apparently they're going to Toughness 5 and 2 wounds, so presumably getting to be something like Death Guard Plague Marines, but with a demonic pattern invul save rather than power armour. At least on paper, that looks like it would really help them reclaim their niche as a more durable horde. I can't help but think though that they, alongside the Corn Demons, are quite likely to be going up to a vastly bigger points cost if they're going to be getting both more dangerous and more durable. I wouldn't be too surprised if the lesser demons wind up being something like 10 to 12 points. Otherwise for Nurgle, apparently the Plague Swords are getting at least a little bit of AP, and Nurgles are becoming non-troops. They didn't say where they were going, but my guess would be fast attack, similar to Tyranid Ripper Swarms. Finally, for the forces of the Dark Prince, there weren't really all that many details shared about Slanesh. It was all a bit more vague, to be honest. If Demonets are remaining in squads of 20 though, then they might be the easiest Chaos faction to hoard now. And as Chaos Fort Demons go, they're already not too bad at that as it goes. Lots of models of 5 plus inbores and volume attacks. The only specific details for Slanesh were that the chariots are going to Toughness 6, a small stat line boost, I'm sure, among many. And apparently they'll be having a whole ton of sneaky melee tricks within the faction. They didn't say how, but apparently there's ways to acquire fights first or last, or fight in death. Kind of a bit meaningless without knowing how, though. Could be stratagems, character buffs, squad upgrades, or anything else. Overall though, it sounds fairly promising for the demons. So far with Ninth Edition Codex releases, there hasn't really been a faction that dropped that hasn't been at least mid-tier when they had their Codex come out, and just about anything would be a significant leg up on the demons Codex as it stands. There's just so many data sheets that feel like they're redundant, or rules that were clearly written for the previous edition of the game. After the leak changes, I feel like the variable range of melee demon saves are perhaps one of the most interesting things, and I really quite like the basic statline improvements on things like Plague Bearers and Blood Letters. They sound quite promising, though it might be a bit weird if they're restricted into more multiple small unit type roles. In any case, I look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. As I mentioned at the start, I think it's certainly worth checking these out at the source where they came from. I'll link the video down in the video description. The guy clearly seems to know his stuff when talking about the forces of chaos, so it might well be worth a sob. Otherwise, if we do hear any more details of the new codex or any other Games Workshop rules or releases, I'll certainly try and cover them here on Allspets Tactics whether they come from Games Workshop's previews or escape to the internet elsewhere. Finally, if you have enjoyed the video, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find it down in the video description below. If you have been enjoying the videos quite a bit, any support is enormously appreciated, and channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.